Hello and welcome to another Billy Geek Toy Review. In today's video, we're entering the Spider-Verse. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, we are looking at one of the Marvel Legends figures from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, now, the most uh, observant of you will see that it says part one up there on the packaging. Now, obviously, these uh, toys must have been prepared before they decided to rename part two across the Spider-Verse, and they've actually renamed it as Beyond the Spider-Verse. Uh, now, that film was meant to uh, come out march next year but there's been a lot of reports that it is nowhere near ready so we're probably looking at another delay on that however across the spider-verse did hit cinemas um last month and me and my son zach went to see it and check out the japanese spider-man video for a quick little uh, review in there when we uh, just got back from the screening that we did in the car <laughs> park from the cinema um yeah it's a brilliant film um it is you think into the spider-verse was a good film this builds on everything that was in that film and just improves on it it's one of those rare sequels that is better than the original obviously not going to give you any more spoilers but spider gwen who was more or less a supporting character in into the spider-verse is now kind of like the co-lead in Across the Spider-Verse, it does concentrate a lot on her background, how she became to be a Spider-Girl uh, or Spider-Gwen, you know, as she's kind of like referred to. And also, um, she is one of the main reasons for getting Miles back into uh, the plot. Um, I won't obviously tell you more than that because... Go and see it on the big screen. It is probably one of the best animated films that I have ever seen. Just the, the sheer ingenuity of like each Spider-Verse has its own kind of like different, unique animation style. It's just, it's just a, a wonder to behold. So this is one of the figures in the wave. And here is some details on the back. So all the characters that you can get... Uh, are obviously Miles Morales, Spider-Man 2099, who he's not the villain in the film, but he is kind of like the main antagonist. He's kind of like the one driving the narrative and kind of like what the reason for Miles coming into conflict with him. Um, but again, no spoilers. Jessica Drew, uh, Spider-Woman, Spider-Punk, uh, voiced by John Boyega. He's probably the standout um, character in the movie. He is really, really funny. Uh, and the... The unique, again, animation style around him. It's kind of like done in that punk style aesthetic with like, you know, kind of like newspaper uh, clippings and stuff uh, as part of his um, universe. It's, it's very, very kind of like very Sex Pistols-y. Um, the Spot, who um, I would say is probably the villain of the film, uh, although he doesn't get a lot of screen time. And then, of course, Peter B. Parker, who was uh, obviously the Spider-Man who um, was in the first film into the Spider-Verse, has more or less a cameo, uh, but I get the feeling he's going to be uh, more of a major character in the final part of this uh, trilogy, should we call it. Uh, so there you go. There's the... Packaging, blister artwork, uh, blister pack. So different from the usual Marvel Legends. Sets it aside. And obviously the big uh, Spider-Man logo on there. But enough about the packaging. Uh, let's crack it open and have a look at the figure itself. Danger. Miles! Want to get out of here? Oh, win? So wait a minute. There's an elite crew with all the best spider people in it? Uh, who's the new guy? This is unbelievable. This is the lobby. Not too fussed about the packaging. Uh, so, I mean, I've taken a little bit of care with the uh, old knife there to open up. But this is uh, a packaging that I probably won't be keeping. Uh, but here we go. Here is the figure. It comes with a couple of accessories. Now, I have seen other 
uh, reviews online that have uh, kind of bemoaned the um, the accessories that it comes with, uh, comes with, and they do say that perhaps you know just one set of hands isn't enough. Should have at least come with uh, another set of hands because well, let's just prize her out. What you've got here is obviously an alternative head, uh, which is there. And then you've got the two kind of wall crawling hands, which are nicely detailed, very nicely painted. Uh, and um, obviously then the figure itself, uh, which is a great, uh, Great lightness to the actual comic book character, but giving it a bit more of that human aesthetic. There is digital face printing on there. Uh, lovely attention to detail with the hair shaved at the side. And also that she's got piercing there, if you can see uh, on her eyebrow, which again is a nice bit of detail. But um, some reviews have said she should have come with two web slinging hands. And obviously two fists, but you just get fist, web slinging hand on the actual figure itself. And then the wall crawling hands uh, as an alternative. So um, usually you get at least like three pairs of hands with Spider-Man figures. Um, so I don't know why they've kind of like cut corners with this. Uh, because this is still $24.99, which is obviously the standard price for Marvel Legends. Um so yeah a bit of a bemoaning there that yeah you know you could have just thrown in an extra pair of hands there really just to give you some more display options or some more play options if you're the kind of person who plays with their action figures um lovely paint job uh very nice clean web lines on both arms no dodgy um paint splashes or anything there which is good uh she does seem very kind of like delicate and fiddly but kind of like you know she's obviously quite thin but in keeping with the aesthetic of the character uh, nice bold paint lines on the body and lovely attention to detail on the shoes with the converse uh, and the high tops really good detail there so she's a, a right, a very good, like, nifty little figure. Um, you know, I wasn't really going to be that invested in um, this action figure line. Um, but I just loved the film so much. I loved, uh, obviously, the character. I loved what they did with her. Uh, you get some backstory about, how, obviously, how she became uh, empowered with, uh, you know, spider-like abilities. And, obviously, that her Peter Parker in her universe was... Um, um, became the Green Goblin and, and tragically died. So she lost her best friend. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend in her universe. Uh, there's hinted at a, a kind of like romantic um, potential with her and Miles. Uh, but I think it's more unrequited love from Miles rather than Gwen. Uh, although she does notice it. So I think the only other figure I'll probably be getting uh, out of this range will probably be Miles Morales. The Spider-Man 2099, I'm not too keen on the comic book aesthetic of him as the figure. I'd much prefer the one that um, Hasbro released uh, about two years ago. I uh, hope that they release him again, which is more kind of like comic book accurate, not like, you know, built like really like, like Arnold Schwarzenegger like he is in this film. Uh, and you never know, Spider-Punk becomes um, quite cheap. Uh, I think I might pick him up as well. But besides that, I think I'm just keeping to spider Gwen and Miles. Um, interestingly, shortly after we saw the film, we popped into Smith's, which is where I got this from. And they had, the week before the film came out, they absolutely had a load of these figures on the shelves. And then literally within a couple of days of the film coming out, uh, they were completely empty and out of stock. So um, these figures are very very popular and are flying off the shelves so i've just popped the head off there so you can see a bit more of the brilliant paint job and the different color in the hair which is nice uh, and then you get i think that pops off there because that's the hood 
So that's the section there. And then obviously then the hood then goes on here. So you put that through and let's just pop that in place. That needs to go down there. Yeah, so there you've got her as uh, Spider Girl as the display option. Now I'm really torn about how to display this figure. Do I display it like that or do I display it with the head? My go-to option was always to display it with the actual mask on, with the hood up. But you know what, I really am liking the face up sculpt on that. Hmm, interesting. Yes, lots of uh, quandaries there about how I'm going to display that. Lots of articulation on uh, the figure. You can move it into various like different poses. Lots of kind of like hip swivel. Uh, you've got obviously uh, double knee joints. Uh, not much movement on the old arms there. We don't seem to have butterfly joints there. Um, but at least you've got some kind of movement in there. I apologise for the little noise at the side, but it's the old cat joining me again whilst I'm filming a video. Uh, she's actually taking my spot and uh, the usual um, thing that I put down on the table, she's actually lying on top of that. So hence why you get to see this instead. Bit of a change of scenery. Um, one thing I've seen a complaint on is from a paint job point of view is this like copyright mark that's there on the leg. A lot of people complaining uh, that that really should be on the feet. But the feet are so small, I can kind of get why you've put that on there. But I suppose if you don't want that art showing on display, you could easily just quickly go over it with a bit of paint or black marker or even just try and uh, scrape it off a little. But it is a great figure. Let's just see how she stands up, if she does at all, because she is very, very spindly. Let's just move the camera down. There we go, that's not too bad. Nice little bit of a display. Of course, we could even have her a bit more kind of like, spider-like but again you kind of get into ooh, precarious balancing issues there of whether or not she's actually then gonna stay as she is yeah she's there you go no <laughs> so obviously the i think she probably comes across as a little bit top heavy there um, but I'm pretty sure you would be able to put her in some kind of pose. There is no peg holes, though, on, on the uh, the feet, which um, you know, Black Series and uh, Marvel Legends usually do have, which obviously they, if you then get stands, uh, you can then kind of like have them posed so they don't fall under. But, so that's a bit of things. So you might have to use a bit of blue tack if you were... Having her in a particular pose, yeah, she's not going to stand up there. So let's just have her stood up a bit more like that. Anyway, it's a great figure. I'm still not decided how I'm going to display it. Um, I think I might, might display it with her without the mask on. I think that looks like a far better display option. Um, but um, $24.99 from Smith's, lots of online retailers. Um, like I said, a little bit limited that we've got obviously only one pair of hands there, but you know, I'm sure if Hasbro are going to re-release these figures at some point or next year or whenever, uh, the final film beyond the Spider-Verse comes out, I'm sure they might think about just putting a few more extras in there. So hope you liked the review. If you did, please leave us a like, it really does help out the channel. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button because um to be notified oh hello cat <laughs> whenever we upload a brand new video in the meantime uh, there's been more videos to come take care stay safe and we will see you soon <laughs> on bearded geek toy reviews the cat he's really just out of sorts there <laughs> she doesn't know what to do <laughs>
Oh, I've disturbed her. Oh dear. Anyway, see you later, guys. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Can't stop me now! You can't run forever, kids! I can't lose one more friend. Miguel, this isn't what we talked about! You knew? I had no idea! What are you doing? Station, stop Spider-Man! You? you, 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 you I looked at my uncle and... Uh, let me guess. He died?